Hello everyone, this is GamePro24X, and today we're going to be taking a look back on some of my old videos about certain farming methods. This is going to be what I call the Revisit series, where I go back and take a look at the methods that I displayed and what has changed from then till now. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things that have changed throughout the lifespan of this game. This is also supposed to clear up any misconceptions that people may have on certain methods and such, and to help answer a lot of questions that I constantly get on these videos. Now that I have more information on the matter to help demonstrate my point. So does that sound all right to you? Great. Now let's get started. So the video that we're going to be looking back on today is not just one video, but two, because these two videos actually have information that coordinate with each other. It's just for some reason I forgot very important information for the newer version. So I might as well clear the whole thing up and make sure I give everyone an entire broad scope of the entire situation. And those videos are my AFK videos slash the resource farming, a uh, the AFK processing method. Anything that has to do with that, that's those are the two videos that I am talking about today. So what is AFK processing? Well, that is essentially when you process your materials while you are away from the game. And the purpose of this is to help build up your Infinity Farm profile. That way you never have to do this ever again. So what is materials processing and how does it work? So in Metal Gear Solid 5, if you go and collect the big containers out in the world, they will be colored from white, beige, and red. White being giving you the least amount and red giving you the most amount. And what is given inside those, those containers is unprocessed materials, which have to go through a processing phase in order for you to actually use said materials. You can also collect processed materials in the game, but they come in a much, much lower quantity than the unprocessed materials. So the processing bit of the cycle is all done automatically through your mother base, more importantly, your base development platform. If you go on your base development platform, you should see on your tab your current level for your materials processing rank. And each rank determines how many minutes have to pass before an X amount of materials are processed. When the process does happen, all of the common materials such as fuel, bio, and common metals, you will be getting 2,500 of those every single process, while the minor metal and the precious metals come in a much lower quantity since they are a much more difficult resource to process. Those numbers do not change. It's going to be like that for everybody. It doesn't matter what level you are on your base development platform, nothing. You will always get the same amount every single process. The only thing that you can affect is how long it takes for each process to go. So I'm going to leave up a list of the ranks along with how much time has to pass in order for you to process. As you can see, at rank S, it will take you 10 minutes to process your materials. So in hindsight, if you are just starting out and you want to and you're considering doing this method, do not do this method because you're most likely an F or a D rank and you're going to end up wasting more time trying to get a small amount of resources where you could have went out and leveled up your base development platform and then they would have been given to you a lot faster. So to those of you who are brand new, don't really worry about this. Just focus on leveling up your base development platform. And once you get to like B, A, or an S, then you should possibly consider doing this. Other than that, don't really attempt it. Now, back when Metal Gear Solid 5 first came out, there was a lot of misconceptions on how processing even works in the first place. That is until I went into the game I started uh, experimenting and I later figured out how it all works internally. So the idea was that no matter what, whatever rank you are, as soon as your time has passed, let's go ahead and just keep using the S rank for example, 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes that passes by, you would think you're earning your resources. That actually turned out to be slightly incorrect. 
Turns out that the game actually has another feature to trigger this that it doesn't really explain to you, but it was something that I found long ago. And that is if you pass a checkpoint. So not only do you have to have an X amount of levels to be on an X amount of rank, you also need to pass an X amount of minutes, but at the same time, you also need to pass by a checkpoint in order for you to receive your materials. Here is the problem with uh, how the system currently works. If, for say, you spent 20 minutes and you never passed by a checkpoint, but you already know that 10 minutes have passed and you already know another 10 minutes have passed, so you would think you would get double materials when you go past the checkpoint. You don't. Turns out, once after 10 minutes passes, whatever time you have left over is wasted time. And basically, you will have to trigger the checkpoint at exactly 10 minutes in order for you to effectively gain the most amount of resources possible. Now, from a game designer's perspective, that's a very broken system. It Honestly, it should, com it should be commutative, and it doesn't matter if you have to pass by a checkpoint or not. If 20 minutes if, or 30 minutes go by, you should be able to get all of the materials that have processed within that time limit the second you pass a checkpoint. But instead, the game doesn't. And in a way, you now have to kind of time yourself if you want to benefit the most from your processing. But the issue with that is that there is no natural way for you, the player, to effectively gain your materials every 10 minutes or so. There is no way you're going to be passing by a checkpoint every 10 minutes. Some people like to take things slow. Some people like to take things fast. There is no way in hell you would be able to, like you as the player playing the game legitimately, the way how it's supposed to play, are going to be earning what you have worked up for. So I got to work and I tried to figure out a way how you can benefit from this system the most. Because during that time, FOBs did exist, but it was completely optional. The way how it was back then, the maximum materials that you would have total is 200k. That's it. 200k will be your cap. There is really no reason to play FOBs, uh, except if you want to gain materials faster, but playing the game normally would also get you a lot of materials faster. But there are people like me who don't want to participate in FOBs and possibly, you know, ruin my progress on my own FOB because of it. So I try to find out a method for single player to help gain as much as I can effectively. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at one of these old videos of one of my first methods. Once you've caught up to the truck, you're just going to hop onto the back, go prone, and that's it. You don't ever have to worry about anyone catching you or anything like that, because they never do. Uh, the guards are going to get out and they're going to talk, but they're only going to talk for like a few minutes and then go back and hit the checkpoint. The important thing is, is that they're killing time. Alright, so here comes the meat and potatoes of this whole video. So, I always get this misconception a lot. There are people who still think the truck method is is still effective today and I can tell you with a lot of confidence that it is not. And here's how. Alright so I have a chart up here to help better illustrate my point across. That way I can help dispel any doubt that this method is at all useful or that you should this is something that you should do because trust me it's it really really is not as great i mean back then it used to be pretty good but now today there's even with a better method there's no point in doing this all you're doing is you're killing your your ps4 a lot quicker doing this method so to explain this let's take point a and b a is at a checkpoint and b is where the truck stops to you know, talk to the soldiers and stuff. So while you're sitting on the truck, the truck has to have some time to pass from the checkpoint all the way towards the guards, right? So a certain amount of time is going to pass. 
once you get to the point B, the guard's going to come out of the truck, talk to the other guards for a while, get back in the truck, and drive right past point A, triggering the checkpoint, thus getting you the material. Here's the problem, though. The timing between that whole cycle is very inefficient. It's inefficient because it's random at best. It's very random with the times. And as I explained earlier, if you do not pass a checkpoint after your, it's your time to process, every minute that you spend waiting is minutes wasted. Because you're not going to get double resources if 20 minutes pass by, for example, if you're an S-rank. 20, if 20 minutes pass by, you're not going to get double resources. You're only going to get just one set, and that's it. And hiding in this truck is going to give you that error all the time, and I've seen it. I've timed it, and I've tried it with the newer methods, and the newer methods beat it every single time. Essentially, there is no guarantee that that truck is going to pass by that checkpoint every 10 minutes. It could be one minute. It could be two minutes, could be three, four, maybe even five minutes late to showing up by that checkpoint. But if you take all those numbers and times that by 10 or 20, which is likely the amount of time that, or which is likely how many times that truck is going to pass by A and B throughout you being AFK, take a look at how, how much time was wasted in between when you could have gotten resources. Let's just take one minute, for example. Ten minutes have already passed by. Or one, ten minutes have been wasted. So you already missed out on one process because of this method. And if you keep going higher above that, you're going to end up missing out way more. You're going to miss out like hours upon hours of processing time because you chose to wait in that truck. And that truck is very ineffective when it comes to going back and forth between A and B. All right, so now that we've covered the AFK truck method, let's take a look at the other methods that I've provided later on in the future. On the way towards the mansion, you're gonna be looking for a giant rock, like a big boulder, because that is where we're gonna do this uh, new farming method. And this is where you should be uh, when you go looking for it. So the mansion is not that far away, so it is fairly close to it. But yes, that rock that is just beside me is the rock that we're doing this in. Now, <clears throat> let me go ahead and explain to you what you have to do. So when I first started doing this, I noticed this little pattern. Look at the checkpoint. You notice how it keeps triggering a checkpoint every time I come back down? Like every time a uh, snake slides down the, the rock? I was like, huh, I, I wonder if this could work. The thing is about this method is that it's slightly flawed, and I'm going to demonstrate to you right now uh, why that why that is. So, if your character is not moving at that exact spot, you can end up walking up the boulder, as you can see right here. And there were some times where I've tried to set it up, and Snake will just automatically just start going up the the the, the boulder. So I was like, okay, there needs to be a better way to do this so that I'm always sliding down. So I was like, hmm, what if I try D-Walker? At first, the plan was going to be I put D-Walker up on the, the rock so that Snake can't easily walk up there. But I found out that if you just do this that I'm doing right now, that it practically does the same thing. All right, so let me go ahead and break down why this method was a lot better than the previous truck method. As you can already see, you can trigger the checkpoint literally like every single second, meaning that every time 10 minutes will pass by, you will instantly trigger the checkpoint, thus you will get your materials processing. There is not going to be, there is not going to be a time where you're going to have any wasted minutes. The only thing that you would end up wasting is potentially one second, but literally one second is way better than missing one minute per cycle. So that right there is already a lot better. However, this method has a lot of problems to it that I have seen a lot of people complain about. 
and some other workarounds that I've never really made before that others have done, um, such as instead of just using D Walker, staying in D Walker and walking up the mount or up the boulder, people would park D Walker up on the boulder. That way, Snake has minimal chance of straying away from the sliding portion of the rock and having better success. However, um, that in itself is also pretty difficult to get right as well. So the meth this method is a lot better, yes, but the execution is a lot more difficult for many reasons. And because of that, people would rather just rely on the old truck method. So I can kind of understand why people would still gravitate towards the truck method because they just couldn't get this one to work. And I can totally attest to a very personal con that I experienced with this method. And I already have it written up up here on the screen. But the gist of it is, is that I checked everything after 30 minutes of it doing the AFK thing. I checked on it. Everything was fine. Turned off my TV, went to work came back and I looked at my processing and I looked at all my materials to only find out that I only processed once and then Snake somehow deviated after that. So out of the entire eight hours I was gone at work, I only processed once after I checked it and that entire time was just wasted. All eight hours wasted. So that right there is a really, really huge con and that is probably something that people may have experienced themselves or figured out themselves earlier and realize okay if i can't ever get this to work a hundred percent then i end up losing out way more than i ever would with the truck so there needs to be a new method that gives off the same benefits as the rock method but also gives people the confidence like the truck method and just reduces the cons of both entirely thankfully thanks to nita johnson such a method now exists and I'll show you what it is that they're talking about. So for this method you're gonna have to go to Spugme Keep which is located in Afghanistan and it doesn't matter which route you take you're gonna have to go down this specific path right here and we're gonna go ahead and just kind of skip through the video a little bit just so it can serve them some time. So the important thing that you have to look out for is while you're running down this road, keep an eye out for that checkpoint. Once you've found the checkpoint, you're already halfway there. Alright, so the location is right around here. And it turns out, coming up to this rock, right between these two rocks and essentially inside this little bush right here, will trigger the checkpoint. But if you position yourself just correctly, you'll notice that the checkpoint will constantly be triggered. So here is the location here on the map, so go ahead and take your screenshots now. That is where you have to go if you want to now do a much better and much more efficient AFK process than the one I currently had before. And as you can see, you don't need anything extra extravagant to make this work. All you need to do is just stand right here on the little bush in be wedge yourself in between the two corners and just walk forward. And based on what others have told me about this method, they have had a lot more success and a lot less errors than they would with my previous rock method. Now, theoretically, if you were doing this method and you had zero processed materials going all the way to 500k, this is how long it would take if you were to try to process all of them, or at least the four main ones, which is fuel, bio, common, and minor metals. It will take you about 67 hours from 0 to 500k to process all of that at once. And of course, for precious metals, if you're going from 0 to 500k, it will literally take you 334 hours. And that's if you are an S rank on materials processing. Now, I know a lot of you might say, well, why would anyone want to do that? Well, the purpose for doing that is to help build your Infinity Farm profile. And essentially, the gist of it is, is that you just re-upload your file every time you deposit your, your processed resources into your online bank. And because you can do that, 
you never really lose anything because you're just re-uploading the same file over and over and over again. So to those of you who are familiar with Infinity Farming, you know what I'm talking about. But I will do another revisit video for the Infinity Farming a lot later. But to let you all know, um, this is very important to that. And essentially, you would only have to do this whole AFK processing once. You would just have to do it once and you'll never have to worry about it ever again. Now, because you're going to have to leave your PS4 or your console on for a very extended period of time, um, I kind of wish I had this, but this is what I have now. You can buy these external fans. Um, you can get them for probably a little bit less than what I have listed here. The one that I got was like maybe 10 I think close to $15. But yeah, um, I wish I had this when I was doing this method because, you know, there would be times I would come back from work and... Uh, my PS4 will be very, very hot, and obviously that's not a very good thing. So if you don't want to buy that, that's fine. Um, all you have to do is just make sure your PS4 is out in a nice, open, well-ventilated area, and just make sure there's constant airflow going around it. Um, I would highly advocate buying one of these for like any console because um, I can attest to this. Um, I have um, the old Xbox 360, right? And I had one of those third-party fans attached to the back of it. I have owned three, three, uh, three 360s in my entire like lifetime. And the first one died within like four years. And the second one, I when I got that, I also had the fan with me. So I attached the fan to it, and it can still work up until this day. So it lasted well over the four-year lifespan. And if you guys are very unaware of this, um, the Xbox 360s were very notorious for getting the red ring of death, which is caused by overheating. And the reason why it overheats a lot is because the actual design of the Xbox could not properly filter out the air or the hot air. And that's what caused that issue for a very long time. So the key here is to make sure your console is very cool or at least have something to help cool it down. And with these fans, like they have, they have really cooled down my PS4 and kept it safe. So I highly advise just having that in general. You don't even need it for this. Um, it's not just for this method. It's just more of like you want to prolong the life of your console. Now I want to reiterate one more time. The purpose of doing this is to help build up your offline Infinity Farm profile. All you have to do is just do this whole entire process once and you never have to do this again as you will have an infinite source of resources that are processed at the ready whenever you want them. Now you could probably alleviate a lot of this time if you just use the insurance fraud method. All you do is just have a buddy who has um, the FOB insurance, go raid his platform and or raid the base development platform and steal all the materials that he has there. And you could um, max out on your online cap and I believe you should have some leftover that spills over into your offline bank so that's one way you can do it but i don't know how long that would take as well because you know i haven't really run the numbers on that kind of stuff but it's it's something that you can do on the side so with all this in mind i hope i was able to clear up any misunderstandings and provide you guys a much better method thanks to nita johnson for pointing that out once again thank you very much for your contribution and showing us a much better way to do our AFK processing. I honestly didn't think that anyone else would really find anything, but I had an idea that there was going to be another place in the entire game where you can do this. I just never knew where it was, but thank you very much for that. Um, all of this is only talking about offline uh, processing and such. There's actually another category, which is online processing, and that actually heavily deals with your FOB and all that stuff. But because this video is already long enough, that's already another piece on its own. But the thing is, though, is that I never really did too much research on it because it was very difficult on how to track everything. However, if you guys go to this little blog here that I found, um, it looks like these people were doing a lot of research about how the online portion of the entire resources works. So definitely go on there, give it a read if you're hungry for that kind of knowledge. I thought it was really interesting. But um, I think I'll definitely do a video on it. Um, somewhere down the line because again it is it's something that fascinates me it's something that you know i like seeing 
And uh, who knows, maybe I might get uh, the person who was ser- researching all this and to come on to a podcast or something and talk about it. So, who knows? So I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you very much for donating to the channel. Uh, every little bit helps, but to those of you who watch and subscribe to my content, that also helps as well. Thank you all for being patient with me on like my video uploads. I know I haven't really been uploading a lot of good stuff ever since, but I hope this video would start to change things around and from here on out i'm just going to do a little bit more revisit series and you know really just talk about a lot of things that have changed and a lot of new methods or just anything else that has happened in this game but if you really like my content and you're new to the channel definitely subscribe if you also want to talk with more of my peers and such you can always join my discord chat uh, we always have a lot of people talking there's always new members coming in and out so you know there's always something there Thank you guys for watching. This is GamePro24X, and I will see you guys later. Mission complete, and how? They're gonna tell stories about this one, boss.